So what we were talking about here before you were uh, pulled out of class here is we're talking about our very, very first project, which is going to consist of non-objective, non-representational art. Right? Now we're doing that art, as you saw, on really teeny tiny little uh, cards, but we're going to do something similar to like this guy right here. Now you're going to propagate your picture. You're going to have a lot more to it, uh, more so than one little loop-de-loop -loop in the sphere. But what I want to talk to you guys is a couple things. First, on how to color a little more properly. Right? We're going to talk about depth and the idea of adding in a sense of depth. And then we're going to talk about kind of shaping out our objects a little nicer. Okay? So here we go, real quick. So I've got some uh, colored pencils here, right? First things first, think about your bare bones basic shapes. I'm not talking about octagons and dodecahedrons. I'm talking about the square, low circle, und, triangular, right? Now way back in third grade, you thought you were like the greatest triangle colorer ever, and you probably were. But if you think about it today, if like your science teacher assigns you a uh, you know, project and says, make a big poster for this science project, you probably do not care about the coloring, I would assume. You probably grab some washable marker and you're just like, yep, colored, I win, right? But it looks like poop, so don't do it, right? Just done deal, okay, that's part one. Part two, maybe you're feeling particularly colorful that day and you're like, I'm gonna really make this nice. And so you like grind your pencil down to a little nub and you're gonna put every single piece of colored lead on this page and that's great, right, that's great, but A, it's kind of messy, and B, you inevitably miss out on little tiny gaps, these little like white spots, and we'll talk more about those later on in the year, but you get these little gappies, and I'll tell you this, later on as this year progresses, I'll start being a big old jerk about not coloring or not filling in your space. These little gappies are not, no, no. So, anytime you are painting, coloring, whatevs, a really good uh, rule of thumb is think about soft, multiple layers, right? So it's not one singular deep color. Instead, you're going through, and you're gonna kinda stay within the lines, of course, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and lightly kinda color in, right? Then maybe I turn my page a little bit and I'm gonna lightly color in another direction. This is actually a, a particular technique that we're kinda stealing from called cross-hatching. We're gonna get to that later on in the year. This is just our very first project. Uh, if you go outside the lines a little bit, eh, who cares? We're not perfectionists here. Right? But notice, light, soft, soft, soft pencil. I'm doing, just so you can kind of see, like, this is how soft I'm going. Like, really little wispies, right? But I'm kind of doing them over and over and over. And eventually, they start collecting. But they kind of become this nice, solid, rich color, right? This is almost, like, too dark. I've destroyed my pencil, and I've left, left uh, little gappies here. This is nice and solid, nice and clean. Um, the same goes true if you're like painting a wall in your house for some reason. You're better doing a couple soft coats and doing multiple coats as opposed to one big old glob of paint, right? All right, so that's part one. Cool. Part two. So let's say, for example, that you want to draw a shape, but you don't really like the square, circle, or triangle. You want to do more of an amorphic blob. So you make something awesome. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, I mean, it's different, that's great. Uh, it's not anything in particular, so it's definitely not objective. But it also just kind of looks like you've pooped out a line. Like, it's not really inventive or solid or creative, or it's just kind of is, right? So instead, in the background a little bit, think more like puzzle pieces. We want them to be really crisp and clean. They can still be really outlandish looking, that's fine, right? But we want to go through and maybe kind of sketch them out ahead of time. So I'm going to use these basic shapes up here. And maybe I sketch out, like, okay, I'm going to lightly, lightly sketch out like a Rectangle, I don't know. We put like another one, like a triangle coming out over here. Put like a sphere. I'm gonna kind of build this out a little bit. Put another sphere. Maybe we've got like a, I don't know, a little lump over here. I don't know what's going on. Right? So I've kind of built this up lightly. And then I'm gonna go through and kind of clean up those lines a little bit. That comes down to like a 90 degree angle right there. Around town, right? So it's still a weird looking goofy shape, but it feels solid as opposed to a line, right? So just kind of think about that. We're going to get much more into this kind of idea of using shapes to build up volume later on. If you don't use this highly for this project, it's not the end of the world. I just want to kind of like put it in your, plant it a seed in your brain so you kind of think about it. Okay, there's that. 
Something else we're going to talk about is the idea of depth, right? Adding a sense of depth is going to really add another dimension into your uh, artwork. So say, for example, if I want to make two squares, well, th this is, okay, there's two squares, right? But they're flat and boring and they're just lines. It's not fun. Instead, think about maybe taking those and moving them into space. Space. Right? Now, if you're not totally comfortable working with a sense of depth and adding in a sense of three dimensions to something, don't push yourself too hard. We're definitely going to get two projects to deal with this. But I could add on, by overlapping, I could really add a good sense of depth to my, uh, to my artwork, way more so than just these flat shapes. Something else I can do is start thinking about, okay, these shapes are in real life. They're going to cast a shadow, like my pencil is right now, or my hand does, right? These things are in three dimensions, and we see them in three dimensions because they have a shadow. So think about if my light is coming from this direction, then I'm going to have shadow on this side of my square. And this square floating on top is going to cast a shadow on this square underneath. And this one right here is going to get next to no light way down under there. And those little tiny tidbits start to add another sense of three-dimensionality. So again, I'm kind of using my good color ability by kind of going lighter. And I'm also adding in a little bit of shadow where there should be some. And think about where my light is coming from if these objects were, uh, were real. Cool? Okay. So again, way more dynamic, kind of boring as crap. Cool? Awesome. Okay. So the last is what happens if you want your shape to loop in on itself. So again, I, I, you saw whenever you guys came in there, um, if I have a little loop-de-loop, -loop, so it kind of comes around, maybe it goes underneath of itself, right? So around town and under, right? So there's that. Now, first thing, I kind of messed up here. You see how this doesn't really look perfect, right? And that's okay, but if I were to lightly sketch it, it's gonna look a lot better if it kind of connects. And even though I kind of did that, because it's light, I can actually just kind of wash it away with my finger. So, that gives me a nice kind of loop-de-loop. -loop. But again, it feels really flat and boring, and that's not fun. So let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and color this guy. And I'm going to use just this nice pink color. So I'm just going to color it in. I'm going a little bit quick for the sake of this demo, but obviously you're going to spend a little bit more time uh, coloring your square on in. Okay. Cool. Looks great. Uh, actually, it looks horrible. It looks god awful. Don't, don't color like I just did. Okay, so moving on. Um, whenever I want to add shadow, right, because this cord right here is on top, I want to add a little bit of a cast shadow to it. It's going to really add a sense of dimension and make it look a lot better. But instead of reaching for like the black colored pencil, because that's what color shadows are, instead, simply take the color that's there already and just find a darker version of it. So I could take my paint and kind of like color harder with it, eh, that's only so-so. Instead, I'm gonna reach for a red. Red is kind of like paint, it's just a darker version, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add in some red right here. I'm gonna add in some red right here. So that already pushes it up a little bit of dimension, but at the same time too, it kind of looks crappy, right? It's, it's kind of squiggly and scraggly, it's not that great. So what we're gonna do is add what's called a gradient by fading one color into another. Um, in fashion, we call it an ombre. Uh, I would ombre my hair if I had any. So um, moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to want to pull my reds, again, very lightly. I'm going to want to pull my reds into that pink way farther than I think I need to. And I'm going really light way over here. Again, wispies, really, really light. Right? Really light and pulling it around. And then I'm just kind of layering on more and more as I get closer and closer to that dark edge. And that's letting me kind of fade that red so it's not so obvious, right? Then I can even, if I wanted to, go back, take my paint, and I can even kind of pull some of that paint into my red, right? So that's gonna be a much softer transition as opposed to kind of this hard edge that we have right now. We don't want that, that's a no-go, all right? So a nice gradient, very softly wrapping around. That's gonna give you a really good sense of dimension and depth. And then on top of that, I could go through and I could think about how I wanted to add something else to this picture. Maybe behind it, I had in a little sphere. Notice how I kind of sketched it out ahead of time. And in a little sphere, right? And then I, let's say I want to color this guy in kind of a purplish blue. Maybe 
and I'm coloring poorly. Don't do what I'm doing. Do as I say, not as I do. So I'm going to think about my light source, right? So I've got this, obviously the light is coming from the front of us, because this is a shadow right here, der. So we're going to say that my light is coming from, I don't know, here-ish, which means that all this stuff is going to be a little bit darker. We're going to talk way more about lighting and light sources and whatnot later on in the semester. Again, it's just our very first project, so we want to start somewhere. But you want to start thinking about the idea that there is a different, sen a different sense of lighting. You're going to love charcoal a whole lot of charcoal lighting. So I've got a little bit of a light source. It's not heavy, but it's there. And then finally, this cord right here is going to be casting a shadow onto my sphere. So I'm just going to kind of darken up a little bit. So you see, for this one, I'm, maybe I pushed a little bit harder with my blue. Or maybe I switch over. Maybe I could add a little green. Oops. Add a little bit of green into this. I don't really have to. I just think it looks cool. So that's going to add a lot of shadow. And again, we're pushing these things in dimensions, into depth, right? And the more sense of depth I have, it's kind of like a 3D movie. I feel like I can kind of like reach in here and like throw something. And it can disappear. Yeah, I don't know. Pretend. Um, finally, you want to make sure that you think about adding on some kind of background. You never want to have just plain Jane white, spa or white paper, white space. It's, gonna be, it's just too boring. So you can do like a cool checkerboard. That's what I did in the last one. Maybe I want to do like a pattern this time. You know, something. Color it in properly and all that. And again, the more you add to it, not just a loop-de-loo and a sphere, but what if I had five or six objects stacked on top of each other? The more depth you add, the more uh, inviting it's going to be to uh, people to watch and look and, and kind of explore the space uh, more so than a flat, boring shape. Cool? Awesome. All right, that was the condensed version. But um, you've got your little squares. You've got some colored pencils on the center console. Uh, so go ahead and hop to Buckaroos uh, and fill up your teeny tiny little canvases with non-objectives.